Basura. That means garbage. I'll see what happens. Uh oh. Dick cell control is not populating. Over. Hmm. That's a problem. All right, so bear with me on this one. This one looks like we have a failed Dix L controller. Let's make sure the toggle switch is good first. So we've got it plugged in. We know we can turn the toggle switch on. We get a light. So let me grab my meter. Uh, this is just my quick bag. Usually I would use my DL429 meter. Um, but in this little bag, I've been using this little... Um, a lot of guys, you guys have asked me about it. It's this little meter. They come in different configurations. You can get them on Amazon, UNI-T. I got the one that does DC amps. Uh, so I could stuff it on mini splits. Uh, it doesn't do temperature or anything, but it'll do the volts and whatnot. So I'm gonna set it to volts. Make sure it's set for volts AC. It is true RMS meter. Um, let's get this up here and we'll go over this real quick. I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, on these atrocious units, two screws on the sides, a bunch on the top. You can pull this top cover forward. You see how I'm doing that right there? And there's some screws on the bottom if you wanna take it off. I just like to do this. So let's zoom back in on our Dixel control. This is our sensor on this side. Let's try and get this. That wire could be broken right there. Look at that, that looks like it got pinched. Coming right off the toggle switch. I'm gonna have to check that. Can you see that right there? I'll have to unplug that and open that up. If not, you got power coming in right here between six and seven. Well, you can check for 110 volts right there between six and seven. It's a great place to start. If we don't have power between six and seven right there, then I'm gonna look at this pinch on this, uh, see that pinch right there? I'm gonna look right there and see if that wire is pinched. Your eyeballs are your best tool. So let's, let's get the meter and let's check this. Okay, I took the alligator clips off and we're gonna run just the regular probes to get down in there. Hey, because it's tight. Okay, here's what, here's what I found out. I put my meter on there, read 240 volts, no bullshit. And uh, so I called the owner of the place. I'm like, hey, did you guys have it plugged into this orange extension cord over here? And they're like, yeah, we did. Well, somebody had wired that into the panel back there. And check it out. They put a regular three pronger to 240 volts. I shit you not. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, that's wired up to 240 volts. Okay, so it seems that this thing got fried. I'm gonna go ahead and hot wire it. So compressor, fan, I'll use a couple of the Wagos um, and then we can, we can turn it on and see if we can get this thing to run. All right, I got that plugged into a regular 110. When I hit the power, it should, should rock and roll. I heard the evaporator fans come on but not the compressor. We do got a door switch here. All right, we got evap fans. Don't have compressor leg. Let me see if I got voltage to that. Okay, everybody's running. Doesn't mean it's got gas. Let's see if there's a fitting. Okay, compressor runs. 
I got everything bypassed, so the controls smoked because it got plugged into high voltage. This thing down here, look at. Let me get some light. The condensate loops run a leak. So I need to get him a quote to redo the condensate loop and a new controller. All right, all right, YouTubes. I got the control for the Atosa fridge, the Dixel. And then we'll, uh, we'll get the control fixed and we'll replace that condensate loop and get that thing recharged. Let's see if we can make a fridge out of it. The old Atosa. It's a Chinese made fridge. There's tons of them out there now. And I think they're gonna continue to be tons of them out there. So let's get into uh, fixing this thing up. See how we make out. This is a uh, quite the dream job as far as accessibility. So this control, as you know, fried, we're gonna get that replaced. And then uh, we're gonna redo the condensate loop on the condensing unit, that's a leaker. And uh, look at all this room to work around. Isn't that just lovely? Get started on this condensate loop first. Uh, then we'll get into that control at the end. Get my headlamp on here. So the condensing unit's made to pull out forward, but since we can get to the back and the condensate loop is right here. Look at all the oil. Mega leaker. And you got, is that coming over on the screen? Yeah, that condensate loop blew out big time. So, I think I'm gonna cut it coming across here and then up back up there. ready for this. Look at that. Mega blowout. Look at that oil. You know, novel idea to put the heat shrink on the copper, but it's it's not lasting any longer. That's for sure. All right, here comes my non-scientific way of uh, building these up. I, I hope the video will help. You guys are doing it. I just get my tape measure for an estimated, uh, so that's 10. So I figure 10 inches, 20 inches, 30 inches, 40 inches, all right? 45, 53, 58. Plus, I got to add for the bends, right? 58. Maybe 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. So I'm gonna measure out about 65 inches and see if I can get close to this. We can always make it longer because we can cut it down. So, so I figured out 65. I'll roll out 70 inches of copper and cut it. 
and uh, get your soft copper, you roll it out on the floor, you can roll it out flat. As flat as you can get it, it's not gonna be perfect, you know. So I'll try a 70 incher, see how close we get. Give me something to work with. this bend first and this piece just because it's super simple and super easy so you know we're gonna have a 90 right there at about eight inches so I could measure off this dude eight inches and make a 90 right there you can see I got 3 8 copper this is 5 16 I don't stock 5 16 copper so that's gonna be the start the start of the puzzle right there you can just chicken shit it and make a mark right here if you want and that's gonna be your 90 going over bigger copper so the band's not as tight as you can see because I'm using 3 8 and that was 5 16 it's gonna work out just fine boom 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 we're gonna come back right here on this one we're gonna come back this way
see I pooched my little bend right there. A little shorter, but it's gonna work just fine. When it happens, the bender gets a little bender gets a little pissy sometimes. Come up right here. those fitted back up I got the cap tube cut I'm gonna get that dryer out of there that cap tube dryer um, ooh, and the wires for the condenser fan are like right there you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna braise up I think I'm gonna braise that up first I'm going to, if you see the liquid line back there, I'm going to extend that out. I'm going to bring the dryer out here. So when you gauge on from the back of this, you'll have your suction hookup and your high side hookup close to each other. Um, I got everything brazed up. I'm gonna try my pressure deviation test here in a minute. I'm letting everything uh, equalize out. So it looks like we're gonna be around 130 or 129 when it settles down here before I start the deviation test. Then while it's uh, the deviation test starts, we can get into that Dixell control that they use on these. It's very basic. There is a wiring diagram on the back of these units, which is nice. See if that'll focus. They're not showing the evaporator fans, but this the control actually has two contacts for the evaporator fans. But basically, you got 120 volts coming into the control to power it, and then you take the same hot leg up to the control when it calls for cooling. The contacts makes it comes down and fires off your compressor. Um, 
And this one does have fan contacts and we'll have to see if the, uh, I think the, when it gets to set point, I see it's got the door switches here. It's showing you the door switches for the fans coming off the black, but on our control, it actually has fan leaks. I think when it gets to set point, they might be turning off the evaporator fans for energy consumption. All right, here's the actual control. Which one to go here? It's just the refrigerator control. It's the X002H, HPWK3. <clears throat> and it's the model XRD3CX, if you want to look at the schematic online. That's it. This isn't like the universal one from RSD. This is actually just the one for the refrigerator. It says right on here, refrigerator control. And these are your two clips to hold it in. And uh, yeah, let's look at this. You can run two sensors on this one. They're just using one, the room sensor. Six and seven is your power supply to fire this thing off. Eight is line coming in. Nine is your compressor. And then see, they got this fan, uh, the fan leg here too. So you'll go between 10 and 12 for your fans. Okay, if you're new to these and you haven't taken one apart before, they fit flush on the face. They look real nice. It's super simple. Uh, to get these out, it's just these little clips. There's a little side tab you push in and then pull it back. See, I got that off with my finger right there. A little button right there you push down in the middle. And then, all right, let me, I gotta get my other hand in here with this one. Maybe I can put the camera up here. Aim it down. much it I'm gonna go ahead uh, I got my two sensors wires my hot to fire it off hot compressor hot evap fans and that's basically it and then to put it in you get your new one slide it in through the front Look at that. all nice and purdy and then you get your little retainers the squishy part goes to the front like this. You get them lined up on the channels and then you push it in. Let me get my other hand in here. I need to push it right on in until it gets tight. snap like that and then it's in and then we'll put our wires back where they belong all right it looks like our, our holding charge is good we're 22 minutes we haven't deviated uh, so we're in good shape we can get the vacuum started and then we can uh, talk about some programming on the fan um, on the fan some programming on the controller I'm gonna go ahead and run the vacuum today through the gauges um, it's just a small unit I don't see a problem with that. That way the gauges and the hoses will be all evacuated when I do go to weigh in the charge. A little on this little teeny weeny. Yeah, baby, old school. We'll just jam the field piece right through the, the gauges. Old school. All right, let's talk about the Dixel control. Um, I could probably put a screenshot up of some of the literature. Um, you guys are new to these things or you haven't played with them much. It's really, it, there's not a bad control. Usually what happened, like the one that was on here died because they put the 220 volts to it and fried it. Usually what happens, there's no auxiliary relay for the compressor and the compressor pulls too much amp draw and fries these things up. That's usually what I find. Oh, and I didn't put a relay on this one. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, 
I'm not going to turn the power on yet because I got the system on, in, on the vacuum pump. So when you power this up and you want to get to the secret menu, it's the set button and the down button together. Set and down together for about five seconds. And we'll do it in a minute. If you want to change your, if you want to see the set point, you just tap set. If you want to change your set point, you hold the set button for about three minutes and it'll flash and you can change your set point. We'll go over that. If you engage this button, it's going to kill your compressor and put it into a defrost. This one came with the defrost intervals every six hours for 20 minutes. I'm probably going to leave it like that. That'll probably work just fine. And... Well, we'll put a screenshot up and I'll show you some of the other settings on there you can change. Okay, this one, all you get on this control is you get your differential. You get your low limit. 33 degrees, you get your high limit, 43 degrees. Uh, that's your first sensor, second sensor. The OD is uh, output delay at startup. And then CF is if it's Celsius or Fahrenheit. ID is intervals between defrost, you get six hours. And then that's the duration, the ND, 20 minutes. And that's all you get on this control. So out of that big old list on there, that's all you get on this control. Very basic. All right, I weighed the charge in. It's 13.4 uh, ounces. And I just got the machine fired up. We're at 59 degrees. All right, she's dropping down like a bandit. Let's, uh, let's see how our pressures are looking. It's cold in here, so we got 86 condensing and 20 degree evaporator with the factory charge weighed in. I can live with that. Absolutely. All right, we're coming down the mountain here. I think I th set it for 36 degrees to cut out. And on these Atosa units, uh, the evaporator fans are ran by the door switches and the lights as well. And I do have a video about the door switches. They will go out a lot. They're dirt cheap. You can order them from RHS and they will fail a bunch. Um, but that's the, you know, that's the repair on this one. So let's see, we're almost at set point. Let's see what our pressures are looking like now. Uh, oh, look at that, it's not bad. 18 degree evaporator, 88 condensing, and it's probably 59 or 60 degrees in here. So, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna function really, really nicely right there. Okay, so, <clears throat> it does that, that extra set of contacts in there for the evaporator fans, it does save electricity, so it turns the fans off at set point, see? So your evaporator fans at set point do turn off through this control uh, for energy savings. All right, so we just kick back on and that's why you get your compressor light and your fan light. And then you close the door switch and you get your evap fans. Door switch open, right, the fans off. Pretty neat. There we are at set point. She lives.